our first official fall broadcast of 2022. Today is the first official day of fall, so what an excellent way for us to get started here. I'm Ranger Madison. I'm Ranger Claire. And Ranger Alyssa will join us in just a second here. And then our special guest this week is our park botanist, Wendy Cass. She's going to tell us a little bit more about why leaves change. Our fall broadcast today takes place in the beautiful Big Meadows. It's, as you can see, it's a little bit windy. You can see some shrubs kind of moving around behind us and it's partially cloudy. Excellent. Ooh. Great for those colder temps for those leaves. Um, you'll be able to catch this broadcast every Thursday at 2 p.m. on our Facebook. We will be live. Um, make sure that you, you drop. <laughs> Sorry, the acorns, acorns are falling. <laughs> we have hard hats, it's okay. So maybe the bears will come get some. <laughs> Here's Ranger Alyssa. Hi hey, everyone. You'll see this broadcast every Thursday on Facebook. Make sure that you add your questions into the comments because we will be doing a live Q&A portion at the end of this. And it's okay if you miss our broadcast, we'll also post it on YouTube and on our website. Yeah, also on our website, we um, kind of hinted at a new way to track fall this year. And that is the webcam that our partner Shenandoah National Park Association funded. And you have this gorgeous view of the valley and then it just leads up to this magnificent Blue Ridge Mountain which is the park. It's so so cool and that is available on our website actually on the home page you can scroll down and it's called the Shenandoah Valley webcam. So please take a look at that all through the fall. It's a perfect way to track the fall progression. So we are going to definitely be pushing that on social media too so that you guys are staying up to date with it. Go look at that. It's super cool. Yeah. Um, this Saturday, the 24th, is National Public Lands Day, so it is a fee-free day here in Shenandoah. Um, so now's a great time to come and check out maybe what the park looks like before too much color changes. Um, and then remember that you still need to get your ticket to hike Old Rag, even though it is a fee-free day, you still need a ticket to hike Old Rag. All that information on how to get your ticket is available on our website. Yeah, so um, a little bit about National Public Lands Day, it's kind of twofold. We talk a lot about the Civilian Conservation Corps and their part, and also citizen science. And to help celebrate this day, we do have a couple booths set up at the visitor centers, um, and you can look for that schedule of events on our website, on the calendar. We also have a social media post you can refer to. Um, but some of the tables are going to be um, the Appalachian Conservation Corps, which they help maintain a lot. They're one of the few, or one of the many organizations that help maintain the trails that the CCC originally built. So they are super cool. I'm so glad that they're here. Um, so make sure you get a chance to talk to them. We also have some rangers discussing what citizen science is. And basically, it's just uh, the public helping scientists gather data for projects that are going on. So it's really cool. And you can be a part of this because now you can download a free app. It's called Seek by iNaturalist. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the visitor centers, either the one at Big Meadows or the one at Dickey Ridge, there will be a ranger there. And they're going to tell you how to use the app. They're going to give you a quick demonstration. And then you can go out into the park and explore and help discover Maybe new species, maybe some <laughs> that you just haven't identified yet, but you can add them onto the app and it's really cool to track that kind of data. Yep. Now, I believe Ranger Claire has some things yeah. to tell us about. <laughs> we Again. know you have a prop. Yeah, yeah. Are you <laughs> yeah. I do. So this is a map of the park. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about planning your fall trip because we know that one of the things that's not so great about your fall trip to Shenandoah is the crowd. And so we're gonna give you some tips for maybe avoiding that. Um, so, the Skyline Drive starts up here at Front Royal and it goes all the way down to um, what we call Rockfish Gap, which is near Waynesboro, Virginia and, and sort of um, west of Charlottesville. Um, and so, there are two additional entrances. There's one here at Thornton Gap, which is off of Route 211 near Luray. And then there's Swift Run, which is down here, and it's um, off of Route 33 near Elkton. So you have four chances to get into the park. We're telling you that in the height of the of this fall, Front Royal gets really backed up. And the reason for that is that right over here is 
just Washington, D.C. And so lots of people coming out from the D.C. or the Virginia area, and it gets really clogged because the other thing is the town of Front Royal is right there. So we would suggest that you choose one of these others. Thornton Gap is the second busiest, Swift Run and Rockfish third and fourth. So the farther south you go, the fewer crowds you're going to run into when you're entering. And by the way, when you um, make your plans to come to the park, go ahead and get your entrance permit online at recreation.gov because there'll be lanes for people who have already purchased and you don't have to get behind people who are doing a credit card transaction or needing change or that sort of thing. Now, if I were planning the trip and <laughs> I was coming out from Northern Virginia and D.C., I would do something what I think would be really cool, which is I would come out and then get on one of the highways that goes parallel to the park, like Route 29, which is not so much on this map, but it's down here. But somehow then, Big Bat is not big enough. So yeah, mm, how could that have happened? So if you come out and you take that 29 south, you'll go along the side of the mountain and you'll get gorgeous views of the mountain where all the trees and all the color is. And then you come down, depending on how much you want to spend on your day, and you enter at Swift Run or even Rockfish, and you make a big circle. You come back up Skyline Drive, and then you go back out in one of these more northern ones later when it's not so busy. The fun thing about this is, and also the, the other on the other side of the park, you've got Route 340 running parallel to the park. And both of these roads have great little towns. They have all kinds of fun things to do. There are pumpkin patches, there are wineries and breweries, there are um, there's what? Farmers stands. Farmer stands. Yep. yep, and there are um, places to stop and eat and visit some of these little towns that are our gateway communities. So that's just a, a tip for avoiding the crowds that are normally in the northern part if you're coming, especially if you're coming out from DC and Northern Virginia. Um, I wanted to also let you know that uh, we have another exciting thing that we're getting ready to implement. Pretty soon, you are going to be able to opt in for text messages from the park. So, for example, if you're a person who loves to visit in the winter, you know that knowing whether Skyline Drive is open or closed and how the status is in different sections of the drive, that's, that's hard to keep up with. So you are now going to be able to opt in to get text messages that will let you know that. We're also trying to get that going with our campgrounds as well. So if you're a frequent camper and you don't know whether our first come first serve sites are full or not, you can opt in to get that information. We're not quite ready, we're not quite there. This is kind of a teaser. Hopefully <laughs> next week we will be able to give you the information for how you opt in to do that. So, did I cover everything else for us to cover, ladies? I, really I think, think so. you did. All right. Well, yeah. I am going to go <laughs> and monitor your comments and questions so that they can um, answer those here in just a little bit. And in my stead is going to be park botanist Wendy Cass. Come on, Wendy. Yeah. Hey. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today. Sure, it's my pleasure. You yeah. were so much fun to talk to you last year. We were like, we've got to bring Wendy back for our first live one. So here you All are. Right. I'm glad to do it. First day yeah. of fall. First yeah. time. It's awesome. A, and it's a great time to have you because our one of our most popular questions in the fall is when is peak? Yes, that is <laughs> always the $65,000 question. When is peak? And peak in Shenandoah actually comes at a similar time each year, but it varies by a few weeks. We usually say the third week of October is sort of the beginning of the window for the best peak colors here. But in my experience, it tends to be a little bit later. So you want to perhaps think about that even the fourth week of October into early November, because you have to remember there might be peak on the top of the ridge of the park, but there's all those trees on the mountain sides, and so where you really get the biggest color display is when the sides of the mountain are in. So that's going to be a little bit later, generally. So, based on current conditions and the <laughs> summer that we've had leading into this fall, this first fall day, could you give us a range of when you think that peak could be? I think <laughs> the range is probably October 20th to November 5th uh, would be the window
know that I personally would choose okay. <laughs> I, for, for that. Although if you look at the uh, online foliage uh, forecasters that show you maps, they will say yeah. the third week of October, but I would say just a touch later. Um, yeah. Things are turning a little bit early right now because we had some dry weather here early on, you know, in this first part of the late summer, early fall. But now it looks like we may be getting more moisture in the forecast, mm -hmm. which will sort of even things out. Mm -hmm. And overall, it's been a fairly average year okay. for moisture. So expand on that a little bit. Yeah. Can you explain why the leaves change color? All right, well, leaves change color. You, you might think it's because of the temperature or the moisture, but it's actually, it, it's initiated by the day length. So the mm. as the days become shorter and the nights become longer, it starts off a process in the leaves where they no longer are getting nutrition from from the rest of the tree mm -hmm. and so they can can no longer produce chlorophyll and so chlorophyll is that green pigment that makes the leaves all around us green and so if they're no longer making chlorophyll it fades away and these other colors which are already present in the leaf are revealed so fall is like is the big reveal it's, it's not that the leaves are turning orange and yellow. They were that color all along, but it was being masked by the green of the chlorophyll. So as the chlorophyll fades away, the leaves turn yellow and orange, and then they also get some reds. Okay. So what kind of colors can you expect for us to see? What, what, which color, plants are going to change color first, do you think? Well, one of the beautiful things about here being here in Shenandoah is that we have a very high diversity of trees and other plants. us here in Big Meadows you can see some ferns turning yellow and you can see in some of the trees a little bit of yellow so but you'll, the very first turners are things like Virginia creeper you see it twining up the trees along Skyline Drive turning a brilliant reddish purple color and then the dogwoods are turning a little bit purple and we're seeing a little bit of the sumac along the roadsides turning it turns like the colors of the sunset orange and yellow yeah. and a little bit of red <laughs> so those are the first ones and then the red maples of course mm -hmm. they're aptly named they turn red and we're seeing some of that right now so that's it's really, really an early fall right now here it is what third week of september so we have many yeah. weeks ahead of us for this to, to, to um transition well would you like to do our, our peak check with us this week oh okay. we have that's a professional all right <laughs> sure <laughs> what, what good are you call <laughs> have a lot of fall color but it really does it has blueberries and huckleberries these are shrubs that turn this lovely brilliant red and purple colors and they're starting behind us Sorry, we cannot share that view with you, but in front of us, we have some ferns that are oh, behind us. Oh, they're a little clump. Yeah, sorry. We're still standing in front of them, but they're kind of turning. They used to be this brilliant green, and now they're kind of turning that brown now. And that's when I see the first signs of fall. The ferns aren't green anymore. Yes. <laughs> yes. But pretty soon, in a couple of weeks, we'll start seeing a lot of yellow and orange in the park as the birches and the rest of the maples and the hickories turn. And then later on, we'll see the oaks. It's always the oaks, yeah. and they they cover. They're one of the dominant tree species in the park. It's different kinds of oaks, and so they cover the mountainsides. And they will turn usually in early November. All sorts of it's, it's different chocolate browns and reddish browns and some scarlet, uh, and they are just beautiful. It's, it's a short-lived peak for the oaks, but it's gorgeous. Yeah. And then I love it at that time of year in the later part of the fall you'll see these rivers of yellow they look like rivers of yellow leading out of the park into the valley and those are the tulip trees or the yellow poplars they turn the most beautiful golden yellow but you can't really appreciate them until late in the fall uh, and it's just gorgeous so it's it's gorgeous whenever you come you've got about an eight-week window <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes there's a lot to look forward to though i'm really excited yeah. Yeah. um so can you explain a little bit why peak might occur at a different time, maybe because of the different locations from the park where you might where you might find it. Well, I mean, there's elevation, so just like in the spring, where when the leaves are coming out of their buds in the spring, 
they come out first at the lower elevations where it's warmer and then the spring creeps up the mountainsides to the top. Uh, and, and it might take three weeks or so for it to creep up. It's the same way with the fall. <laughs> She's got food by an apron. <laughs> without so much crowding. Yeah, it's an excellent time to explore something new. Yeah. Just remember, even hiking along a, a random piece of the Appalachian Trail can be just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a destination hike. Yeah, great. Yeah, great point. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Best part to enter the park coming from Virginia Beach area. So Swift Run. Swift Run. I need your big map. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's the big map? Well, you know, get, get off of uh, 60, 64 at uh, Route 33 at Zion Crossroads and take that right on into to Route 33. Okay, I don't think you can hear me. If you did hear Claire, take Route 33, Zion Crossroads, and enter at Swift Run if you're coming from Virginia Beach, possibly. Off of 64. Off of 64. Or you can go all the way down to the end. Or go all the way down to Rockfish. Okay, <laughs> explain where the visitor centers are. So the there. visitor center at Big Meadows <laughs> is across the street from us, actually. <laughs> 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 Of the in the of the drive. So Am I gonna have to bring my Big Mac back? You might yeah. have to bring the Big Mac back. <laughs> Explain mile markers. Okay, oh, yeah. so when you are in the park and you are driving on the one road that goes through the park, which is Skyline Drive, there are cement mile markers. Um, they range from one to one hundred and two. One hundred five. One hundred five. One hundred five. Our park just got a little bigger. <laughs> um, and so, and that's the way, that's how you can help yourself navigate when you're in the park. And so that is denoted also on this big map and you can get one, you'll have the same exact map when you come through the entrance. It won't be that big. It'll, it'll be a little bit smaller, slightly more manageable for your, for your trip. Um, so as I was saying, Big Meadows, where we are standing right now, 
is pretty much in the middle of the park, and it's right here at mile 51 of the drive. Dickey Ridge Visitor Center, which is our second visitor center, is in the northern section. It's at mile 4.6 of the drive, so you'll enter at Front Royal Entrance Station, and that's way up here. Mm -hmm. So you've got a few miles between the two visitor centers, so that gives you plenty of opportunity to stop off at different um, hikes, and each visitor center is staffed with rangers who can help answer questions, some gift stores, some food. And so. again, the, the further north you are, the lower the numbers. So as you go south, the numbers increase. So up at Front Rural, starts at 1, all the way down at Rock, Rockfish, it's 105. Okay, someone wants to know if we have everything back to normal um, without things being closed due to COVID. Um, I, yes, I'll take this. <laughs> yes. So, they were asked a question if things are back to normal um, in the midst of COVID and the pandemic. So, right now we are operating with a mask optional mandate right now. So, if you feel comfortable to wear a mask when you're in the park, please do. Um, and then we... We do not have a mask mandate at the moment. So, no. yep. and when we do, we will let you know. It'll be on our website. It will be posted on all of the public entrances and it'll be on social media. We okay, are, how we are, about um, the web address for figuring out how to determine what camping sites are available and when. So you can go to our website um, and, and there's a widget there for going to recreation.gov or you can go straight to recreation.gov. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. <laughs> Another yeah, question. Yeah, the question. Next, yeah, we got some questions. We yeah. have one for Wendy. Oh, we have a question which for Wendy. section of the park generally peaks in fall colors first? The central district peaks first. And so the question was, yeah, which section of the park peaks first for fall colors? So the highest elevations of the park are in the central district, so that's where the peak occurs first. So right around Skyland, <laughs> Hawksville, places like that. Good question. So this person, they did the farm hike, they did the Sneed farm mm -hmm. loop, and they were asking if those were the last farmers to leave Shenandoah, and they noted that there were electric lines along that trail. Wendy, can you answer that? Um, I don't know if those were the last farmers. I, I Someone else might know. Um, but the electric lines, there is, um, there are some, there's some infrastructure that's along the road in that area that goes up to uh, a federal, for the, for the Federal Aviation Administration, that, a beacon that helps guide airplanes. So the electric lines, I believe, are associated with supporting that site. So how to actually get to Shenandoah River to paddleboard or kayak, um, not part of the that's, park site. Go to Luray. Go to Luray. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, or Front Royal. Or, or Royal. Yes, yeah. yeah. And there's tons of outfitters all along there that can mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Lisa says thank you, and she has a whole bunch of pretty leaves in her message. Thank so, you, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> um, when will you no longer need to register online to park at Old Rag? So, well, um, Alyssa, talk a little bit about what's going to happen at the end of the pilot. So the question was, when do you no longer need a parking ticket to park at Old Rag? It's not a parking no, ticket. It's, it's, it's not a it's oh, I can't use. Okay. So since March, we have been we have a pilot where you are supposed to purchase a day use ticket to hike Old Rag, and that will conclude on November 30th. And during the entire length of the pilot, we have been collecting data because we want to better monitor and um, manage our resources on the hike. And but create better visitor experience. And the visitor experience is very important to us. So at the conclusion of the pilot, they are going to review all of this data, and then they are going to create a plan for the future. So after November 30th, you will not need a day use ticket. Um, can you find pumpkin patches on the park? I wish. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you find those are invasive patches? species? <laughs> you can find those pumpkin patches cultivated. just outside the park, but since it's a cultivated plant, we don't have pumpkin patches in the park uh, that you can visit. Maybe you'll come across them if you, uh, as Claire recommended, um, take 
a route, a highway along the Skyland Drive all the way down to the end of Rock Space Gap. And through that way, maybe you'll come across the pumpkin patch. I get there. There's got to be out some there. out there for fall in Virginia. <laughs> we, we do have lots of wild apple trees, though. Yes. And you can enjoy some fine wild apples if you want to come visit us. <laughs> can you overnight tent camp anywhere on the park or only designated areas? So talk a little bit about that country camping. So there are regulations for backcountry camping. If you want to, you can't just camp anywhere. So I know in our, um, in our compendium, you are not allowed to sleep overnight on Skyline Drive. That includes the overlooks. Overlooks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but the regulations yeah. are on our uh, website under backcountry camping. The full regulations for backcountry camping are available on our website under plan your visit and backcountry camping. Is the Walton Museum close to the park? So I just went there not too long ago. It's in Schuyler, Virginia. It's a hoot. It's lots of fun, but it's not in the park. So you'd okay. be down um, at the very southern. Do I need to bring my Big Mac? I want to jump in here. With that. <laughs> down, at, down at the southern, very southern, you're going to go on to Blue Ridge Parkway. Oh, Should we're all the way yeah, down here. That's not yeah, on our map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Again, the map was not big enough. Um, and it's it's in Schuyler, Virginia, which is, it's not too far from the, the southern entrance of Shenandoah. It's not too far. <laughs> any other questions? If you guys have any questions, please submit them in the comments. And Claire is reading them to us right now. <laughs> yeah. We're having a lot of Yeah. Ask us anything about the park. You can ask our park botanist about anything about plant ball color, plants, trees. <laughs> We'll give it a few more minutes. The best time to do Blue Ridge Parkway. I mean, it, they're a little bit later than us, probably, Wendy. But for leaves, <laughs> yeah. it'll be later than us. So I would start that in, in late October. Are there any first come campsites in Big Meadows in October or November? So explain that a little bit. So all of our reservations for the campgrounds are booked through the end of fall. First come, first serve, which Claire explained this so well last week. I will do my best today. <laughs> so first come, first serve sites operate on just that. You must be there to claim your site in person, but you have to make sure that it is a first come, first site. First come, first come, first serve site. And then you could say, if you find a site that is available, but it's a reserved site, then you have to know that the next day you will have to vacate that site and find another one. Um, but like I said, they're all reserved for the weekend. Um, but if you don't mind hopping around, or if you can find one early enough for one of those first come first serve sites, then you are golden. What are Tim's dropping to at night? I so tomorrow we're is... gonna hit the 40s yes and tomorrow Ooh. so <laughs> that's new and, and who knows that that was for Lorraine. it could go a little colder even up here in the park the high 30s so we are getting close it is it is normally about 10 degrees cooler up here on the mountain so it'll it could be it'll be a little bit colder here than in the valley have you seen any migrating raptors <gasps> we that's saw that happening. Oh, yeah <laughs> that's happening right now <laughs> Monarch. Are they out there? Migrating That's monarch. A butterfly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I think Claire and I saw one overhead when we were in Lorraine last night, but I've not seen. I've not seen. Is it a castle? Right. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen. When you would, where are the best places to see the wild to see wild apple trees? Milam uh, Gap. The Big Meadows area is a great place to see wild apple trees, and Milam Gap, which is just south of Big Meadows, is a wonderful place to see. Uh, old apple, the remnants of old apple orchards and, and therefore lots of apple trees. Can you talk just a little bit about waterfalls? Waterfalls? We have them in, in the park. We have, <laughs> we have them. Claire, correct me. I don't know the number of waterfalls that we have, but they're in different sections of the park. I mean, they're, if you stop at the visitor centers, the rangers can help you locate a, the water hall, waterfall hike that is best for you, or you can do some research on our website. There's a, there's a category for waterfalls yeah. on the website. And, and on, on our, app, our app, if you download the NPS app and then search for Shenandoah, 
and then you can download the offline content because there's the unreliable service. Still, it's not great. It's very important. Um, and then you can search on there. They have a waterfall height category just like you can find on our website. And a safety message to go with those waterfalls. And a safety message. Yes. <laughs> there's probably, what, 20 waterfalls? There's quite a few waterfalls. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. I mean, there, it depends on what you call a waterfall, yeah, too. Waterfall, yeah. Waterfall. yeah. But we do, you know, we've, we've had some, some horrific accidents around the waterfalls recently, and we just need people to be super careful, stay on the trail, stay beyond the observation fences. It's, it's a scary thing. The important thing to remember with waterfalls is that they look best from the base looking up at the waterfall. There's no reason in the world to go to the top of the waterfall and look down. That's where we get people have accidents. Mm -hmm. Definitely read the safety message on our web page. Yes. What's the app again? Oh, the, the, the NPS app. You can download it on, on your preferred app store. And what you do once you have it on your cell phone, you search Shenandoah and you click us and you can save Shenandoah to your favorites. And on there you have recommended hikes, more information, our calendar from our website. And it's just an excellent, it's an excellent resource for us to have, uh, for you to have when you come and visit us here in Shenandoah. And make sure that you download the offline content. So there will be a switch on top of it when you are in the Shenandoah page specifically and you just turn that on to download online content because the service here is unreliable and there's a good chance you won't have service when you're here in the park. Um, so there, there are campgrounds, there is campground availability during the week as well as lodging availability during the week. Okay. So if people can come during the week, that's a great thing. Um, and explain about Everbridge being a, um, a, a, a uh, choice in the future for tracking those. Right. That, so earlier, Claire hinted or teased our Everbridge system, which we are hoping goes out soon, but there will be an option to enlist, if you will, onto the campground notifications. And when a campground is full, it will send out, it will push a notification to your phone um, or your email. I think it's text message, email. You can, you can decide what you want and it'll tell you the status of those campgrounds. But like she just said, if you come during the middle of the week, there's a pretty good chance that you can find a, a site. And this and this service will be something that will be happening in the future. We don't have it ready for rollout yet, but it is something to be prepared for in the future. So two two more questions and then we got to run. Yeah. Um, <laughs> talk about more. Limberlost and our accessible trail a little bit. Okay, so Limberlost Trail is about a mile from Skyland. Um, mile 42 ish. Mile 42-ish. <laughs> and it's our only accessible trail in the park. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's about a, a little over a mile round trip. Um, it's a circuit hike. And there are benches there. There's an old hemlock grove there. And it's just, I, I honestly love this hike because anyone can do it. It's an easy stroll and you get to see just beautiful trees around you so check it out <laughs> and it has beautiful fall color in the yellows in particular oh, in the, in the Limberlost area because it's full of birch trees beautiful black birch trees that turn yellow in the fall mm -hmm. and mountain laurel in the summer <laughs> <laughs> yes. there aren't any vistas but other than that it's beautiful yeah yes. um so just one more how are the uh, bears doing Last question is about the Bears. How are the Bears doing? Chicago Bears, not so well. Oh, no. <laughs> Wendy, do you want to talk about this? Well, <laughs> all I can tell you is that we have many fewer Bears in the park this year than in previous years because they've been heavily impacted by, by me. So we've had some mortality, some death of Bears. So we have definitely not seen as many Bears this year and last year as in previous years. But there is some evidence that the population expecting to see more bears in the future but if you do happen to see a bear you are one of the very fortunate yes. fortunate people. We actually talked to our park biologist the other day and he said the bears he has seen are looking much healthier yes. now. So that is a good sign. <laughs> That's a good sign. All right guys we're gonna wrap it up because you've asked so many questions. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, we gotta let Wendy run uh, yeah. but thank you so much for being here today. That was such a great. Um, so we will be back here uh, Thursday of next week at 2 p.m. live on Facebook. You can catch us then. We're also going to upload this video onto our website and YouTube so you can rewatch it if you like. So thank you all so much for joining us. We will see you later.